paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. There's nothing funnier than a practical joke. If you want me to <laughs> and when there's a celebrity on the receiving end, it's even more hilarious. It's terrifying. What an idea. Tonight, we've got the most hysterical. Oh, my... I could not believe it. Class. Most outrageous. Jaw-dropping oh, <laughs> wind-ups ever. Featuring all your favourite celebrities. Perfect telly. He's like, yes, I love it. I'm Joe Pasquale, and these are the greatest celebrity wind-ups ever. Oh, my God, it's brilliant. Hollywood is a place where tourists and fans gather in the hope of crossing paths with the big movie stars. Not content with just thrilling fans on screen, in 2015, Arnold Schwarzenegger hit the streets of Hollywood. Boom, 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 boom. For maximum impact, he was dressed in character as the iconic Terminator to promote his after-school All-Stars charity, an organisation which offers free after-school programmes for inner-city youth across the US. Please don't bump my selfie stick. Come with me if you want to live. There you have the Terminator, and it is actually Arnold Schwarzenegger. Get out. He does a very good job, by the way, of looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Terminator. Just joking. He excels at that. Who is this? Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is my line. It's good because it is Arnie, so you think, oh my god, I mean, that's, you know, it's not like, ooh, it's blue. Who cares? But it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's another impersonator being Arnold. <laughs> Who are you? I'm the Terminator. Who are you? I'm the Terminator. I'm the T-800. I'm a cybernetic organism. Human tissue of a metal endoskeleton. I'll be back. 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 Imagine you've just got on your lunch break and you come back and go, how was your lunch? Just got a photo of Terminator? How good's that? He also paid a visit to the famous Madame Tussauds by posing as the mannequin of his alter ego, the T-800. Cruel people would say, is there that much difference? I wouldn't say that. You see him, still. <laughs> and someone looks at him and went, oh, that's, uh, that's very good. Because I am. <laughs> Do you want me to have a <laughs> It is an old prank but it is still brilliant to watch because you know straight away what reactions you're going to get. Can we help you? Oh. No touching. Oh. I would have had to change my boxers, I think, if that, if that happened to me. Let me hold ah. you. You want to come in ah. and oh my God. Thank you. Oh. You can tell he's loving it until he makes a little baby cry. But what's so beautiful is they come in for a picture and the little boy's just looking up, probably just working out. Why is a grown man dressed like that? <laughs> John Checkers has a YouTube channel that delights in jolly japes. One of his most watched pranks was when he and a mate served up a wind-up at Wimbledon. Hi guys, this is Checkers. This is Kay. And we're the Gatsby Club. And today what we're going to be doing is pranking celebrities. These two boys who go around Wimbledon all day with a camera. Hope you enjoy. Here we go. And find famous people at Wimbledon. This is the thing you get your friends with, where you, where you pretend you're taking a photo and really you're taking a video. And your friend looks like a complete and utter idiot. So to get a celebrity to look like an idiot is even better. And they just record the awkward moment of the celebrity going. And waiting for the picture to happen. Can I have a look? Yeah, it wasn't done. I see. No, can I? Mel, so I sussed it very quickly. She's like, I've got to look, I've got to look. And the chap said, No, 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 you can't, can't look yet. Stuart Broad's reaction, I think, is particularly quality because he stays for so long. Oh, wait, can we get to the upset? Are you pressing the button? Yeah, I just wait for it to flash. We're waiting for the flash. You're at Wimbledon, it's the summer. There's no flash needed here.
Wimbledon is such an event and when you're there, I think you go in the moment. And they get all sorts of people. They get some of the big tennis players. They get Laura Robson, they get Rafa Nadal, they get Rayanich. And they're all just like, for the camera. And Chico's on it as well, poor Chico. And the nicest one is Peter Andre. They've been so irritating and he's just so nice. And then in the end, he thanks them. Oh, thank you. Please leave me alone. You know, when you do these things, it's very hard to keep a straight face, and they did. I thought it came out very well. Tennis ace Andy Murray may be one of the world's best players ever but was faced with the grand slam of a challenge back in 2015. He decided to let off some steam before his big match against US tennis legend Mardi Fish and play a prank on some unsuspecting members of the public. And if you're a celebrity, this really is a masterclass on how you shouldn't do a wind-up. Andy Murray has gone over to the States because they've got a big tennis competition. Hi, I'm Andy Murray and we're in Cincinnati um, and I'm going to try and uh, fool some fans uh, this afternoon and try and sell them some ice cream. This is my disguise and uh, I'm going to get out there and see how it goes. I'm not sure his disguise is that convincing. Disguise is questionable, but... We'll go with it. I'll use the word disguise very, very loosely because it's actually just a really bad wig and a cap. He practically wore a t-shirt saying, I'm Andy Murray. I think the new look, if anything, is an improvement. Can I just go bag, please? Free ice cream. Free ice cream? What, what are you going for? Having a good day? I am. Awesome. Thank you. He starts selling ice cream. It's all up there. What would you like? He's not an actor, so he doesn't even bother with an accent or anything. It's fair to say Murray doesn't quite get into character. The key lime pie and the black raspberry are the best. There was no attempt to disguise even his very distinctive, I'm Andy Murray. I think that's what gave him away, rather than, rather than the facial side. Um, let's go with the Pinego chocolate chip. Good choice. He might as well have been wearing a shirt. And they said, I am Andy Murray, with the name badge that says Andy Murray on it, then an arrow there. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? How are you? Good, I'm thank good. you. How are you doing? What would you like? I'd like a sorbet, please. When she's staring at him for a really long time, I guess that moment where you think, I really recognise you. Yeah, where are you from? Um, I'm actually from uh, the UK, but I'm just here, here staying with some friends. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, OK, you look kind of familiar. For all the places to try and deny being Andy Murray, a tennis tournament is a baffling choice. Now, these are tennis fans, and, and they know who Andy Murray is. Yeah. Are you playing, playing any tennis? Yes. Yeah. Not really, no. Yeah. But I like watching. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Looks like Andy Murray's cousin. I know. Are you related to him? Really? Yeah. Are you related? I've had that a few times today, actually. Yeah. Yeah. She goes, are you Andy Murray's cousin? I no, it's actual Andy Murray. It's pretty obvious it's Andy Murray. It's clearly Andy Murray just in a really bad wig. Andy Murray has found out that if you put a hat backwards and put your some glasses on, you look exactly the same. <laughs> Are you Andy Murray? Who? <laughs> Gets found out pretty much instantly. He fools no one. He gives it a good go. He is game. The man is game, and he will give it a go. And he's quite sort of good natured and willing to try. Who you been watching? Uh, Andy Murray. And some of them are just thinking. Why is Andy Murray serving ice cream in a wig? Why wasn't he playing tennis that day? He should have been playing tennis. Everybody was like, thanks for the ice cream, Andy Murray. <laughs> Look, is your career not going well? What are you doing here? Maybe Andy Murray likes to unwind between matches by just going down to an ice cream kiosk and serving people some raspberry ripple. Uh, you an Andy Murray fan? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There was no way this prank was ever going to work. No way, no way. But it was good. It was all right. Murray's at a tennis tournament, so it's not much of a leap of the imagination to think that could be Andy Murray. Are you here for the whole week? Or? No, today's our last day. OK. We're not going to get to see you live. Yeah, that's probably not a bad thing. Um, he took the challenge, fair play to him, and at the end of the day, fans got to meet him, which was a nice gesture. Thanks for joining me here today. Um, I'm not sure how many people I fooled. I tried, but, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. See you later. Can I get a picture? Good. Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm taking my... Oh, I've got to take it off now, sorry. They obviously realised he was Scottish and, and they, they sussed him pretty quickly. He might as well have had the tennis racket. Andy Murray's had a great day. They've had a great day because they've got to meet one of their idols. It's win-win all round. 
In 2011, The X Factor spawned one of their greatest success stories to date, Little Mix. Then in 2014, the girls were touring the States, supporting the megastar that is Demi Lovato. On the last show of the tour, Demi took it upon herself to pull a huge surprise wind-up on Little Mix, live on stage. One of the great pranks of pop music has to be quite recently, and it's Little Mix and Demi Lovato conniving to prank thousands of people at a live gig. You know, I mean, that's, that is pranking on a grand scale. Little Mix are one of the biggest girl bands in the world right now. Little Mix are on tour. It's called the Oversized Curtain Tour. Um, Do you see the... They're dancing away in front of their curtain. They're doing their dance routine, they're singing, and it's a great gig. And then you've got this snowman that comes on stage and starts dancing with them. It's like dancing with them, grinding on them, and they have no idea who it is. I think if you're on stage and someone just comes and joins you, you would be a bit like, what's going on here? Especially if it's like a six-foot snowman. It's a rubbish snowman's outfit. I wear a much better one on Christmas Day myself. It didn't even show on their faces. None of them gave it like, oh my God, what's going on here? They just did their thing. I really respected them because they just kept going. They're little troopers, little mix. They don't look at security or anything. They're not like, get this person off the stage. They're joining in, they're dancing with the snowman. They're like, yeah, this is amazing. Probably a very British stiff upper lip reaction. Just carry on. Snowman turns out it's a great dancer, throwing some great moves. It's a lovely thing because underneath that outfit is the international superstar Demi Lovato. Although you never see that it is, she just tweets that it is later. It was great that it's Demi Lovato, but I would have liked to have realised it was her before the end and maybe seen her, I don't know, take the snowman, hat and carrot off and then she can dance with Little Mix, a big super band. You're being pranked by this great star and you don't even know that's who it is, which is a kind of adds another lovely sublime level to what is a great moment of celebrity pranking. Now for a hidden camera wind-up featuring one of the best footballers on the planet. Cristiano Ronaldo is the guy that all ladies love and all men probably hate. He's got the whole package, in he? He's good-looking, great at football. People who don't even like football looked up to him. Everyone's heard of him, everyone knows him. I think he's a charming young fella as well. When Ronaldo teamed up with a manufacturer to launch a brand of headphones, you'd have thought they'd tap into some of his galactical glamour to advertise them. But you'd be wrong. Basically dresses up as a geezer who's a bit chubby, he's got a beard. He just started playing football like this uh, homeless guy. Never in a million years would you expect to see Ronaldo just standing on the street, no bodyguards, nothing, just kicking a ball about. It's mad. <laughs> what was fabulous was seeing all the people sort of shying away from him. Like, it's a crazy man playing football. Come on, come on. Come on, Really, really good looking lady walks by and he asks her for a number and she says no. She 
turns down Ronaldo. And I really hope she's kicking herself now, because I don't think any woman would turn down Ronaldo. It was a little boy come up to him and he started giving it all his, what he's got in the locker. Bless him, and he's so cool. He's very calm, just kicks the ball back a few times and he's actually really good. Toma, toma. Hey! Ah, bien. Muy bien. And then Ronaldo picks the ball up. The little boy's next to him. The little boy's looking up at him. ¿Cómo te llamas? Nicolás. And the kids are like, oh, I don't mind what I want the ball signed from a, from a homeless dude. I don't want that. It was a great moment when he took all his clobber off and that. Little fella's face just dropped. It was it was pro proper good. I enjoyed it. Imagine if you're a little kid and your football hero is just appears in front of you. That must be the greatest thing ever. And you can tell he's shocked, and you can tell the boy's happy, but he's so cool. His reaction is ridiculous. And all the people come round, there are photos, there are selfies. That's pretty cool, just to like make the whole street stop wherever you go. It was heartwarming. I like seeing celebrities give back. I think it's a, a nice little touch. Even though Ronaldo's, you know, he's got everything in life, he's he's a nice guy as well. You know, I got a little bit dewy-eyed by the end of it. I thought it was very sweet, you know, with a little boy signing the ball. That was cute. The heartwarming viral ad chalked up a colossal 33 million views in two days and presumably sold a lot of headphones. Although born in New Zealand, rugby pundit and former player Brent Pope has over the last two decades become one of the best-known faces on Irish TV. Not long now to the big Heineken Cup final in Cardiff. Brent Pope is a legend in Ireland. Um, he's a big pundit. In 2014, on the day of the Heineken Cup final, the sponsors teamed up with Brent for a fake live broadcast. I'm on the streets of Dublin just gauging the interest and the expectations and talking to some experts who know the game. The prank is that these international experts have, apparently, all failed to show up. So members of the public are asked to help out by impersonating the missing men. We're doing a report with Brent Pope. So they send the researchers out onto the street to go and grab unsuspecting members of the public. You're meant to be effectively French. Okay. It's just a case, really, of standing in the air. You have to look Welsh if you, if you can. OK. And weirdly, lots of lovely Irish men go, all right, then. Clearly a community who are just up for tinks. They're only just a live feat. I mean, they're probably not even going to come to you. You're not even going to get asked any questions. It's fine. You can tell there's a little bit of fear in the face, but they also, are at the same time, are like, I'm going to do it. I'm really surprised that the public was willing to stand in and do like an interview. I would have been so scared. I'd have been like, no, I'm not doing it. Five, four, three, two, one. They think nothing's going to happen. They think they're just going to be stood beside him. It's going to be fine. Over live to Dublin now, where we have Brent Pope. How are things in Dublin? You know, it's a rugby city, and there's a lot of interest around the game. Who will uh, who will prevail, Saracens or Toulon? You have somebody with you. Yes, we have uh, Jean-Claude Baptiste, of course, Jean-Claude, well-known for his, I suppose, uh, views in, in uh, French rugby. Bonjour, Jean-Claude. I would absolutely melt under that pressure. I'd be like, oh my, oh my God, I'm not really French. And you see the look of shock and terror in some of these people's faces. Bonjour, comment ça va? Oh my God, he actually speaks French. I was like, go on, lad. Is that a Nice accent? <laughs> People like to refer me to a French hipster. Oh, yes, I am a French hipster. They put on the French accent. Hey, you've Daniel Day-Lewis this out. Look at you. French hipster? I mean, like, it was as if he was waiting for his moment. If you're Irish, you've already got quite a strong accent, and then you've got to change that to French. That's not easy. Who are the key players? Johnny Wilkinson, I Johnny suppose. Johnny Wilkinson, uh, yeah. yeah. Johnny Wilkinson was named, and and he sort of ran with it. Maybe Johnny Wilkinson? Yeah, yeah, Johnny Wilkinson. And you're thinking, oh, God, these poor guys. Yeah, he's a great kicker, and uh, if it turns out to be a kicking game, he'll do it for them. They were just blagging it. And it was so funny to watch. Well, I mean, 
I don't know, uh, maybe you're more uh, in yeah. position to... Yeah, well, obviously, we're talking before, you know... That's the best way to do French. Just shrug and go... Ugh. And with any question, you can really get away with that. You just go... Ugh. We have to go to a commercial break now. Two minute break, OK. Just time to go and grab a food break. So they have a break, and uh, Brent just says, oh, have I got time to nip to the loo? Brent, is Brent back? He's clearly setting it out there that he's off for a number one. Anybody seen Brent? Eyes on Brent. Turns out he's gone for a number two. Five, four, three, two, one. Brent's gone AWOL and they cut back and now it's just them on the own. Hello, is that Brent? That's uh, Jean-Claude, is that you? Oui. Is that they're like Jean-Claude? He goes, oui. Oui? <laughs> oh god, it is the worst. And you can see the absolute fear in their eyes. Brent, uh, he'll be with us uh, in a moment, uh, so we're, yeah, we're, oh. just, we're just waiting for him now. These poor guys, I mean, honestly, it made my palms sweat. I'd have run off, I'd have been like, sorry, I've got to go. You know what, guys, I'm not French. Brent Pope's having a poo. I'm out of here. Brent is not here at the moment, but uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Yeah, uh, we're just going to wrap up from here now. I was <laughs> like, that's amazing, really, for a complete novice. Brent's gone. He's like, this is my show. And he wraps it up like a true professional. What a guy! From Ireland and from Dublin here, we say goodbye. And we're out. It's a wind up. It is, of course. Oh, amazing. Tell him. You guys need to wind up. When you went to the toilet, and somebody like he's absolutely winding me up. But they were all so smiley, and some of them really laughed. When it's revealed that it is a prank, a huge relief on everyone's faces. They was all quite shocked, but I feel like they was all pleased with themselves because, like, the public did really well. I think hats off to the public. Give those blokes a job on telly. That's what I'd say. My mum and dad are Irish, so they probably genuinely made their day. They probably went straight on Facebook, tweeted about it, Instagramming it. It's just, it's a good story, isn't it? He's shaking. <laughs> Class, real good prank. Like that a lot. For a prankster, that was really good. Woo!